What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video, I'm super excited to share this method. It's something I learned from Daniel Tall at 3D Basecamp. We're going to talk about how to basically heal site work using Soap Skin and Bubble and Profile Builder. So to start off, um, this is not a workflow that I came up with. It's a workflow from Daniel Tall, who's uh, one, one of the experts in landscape design and SketchUp. He's an expert in a lot of other things as well. But this actually came from a presentation of his that I watched. Um, so I'm gonna link to his channel up above and down below. Make sure you go subscribe over there. He's got some great info on, uh, on Placemaker and some other stuff there as well. And I'll also link to his website down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So on one of the things that can be kind of difficult within SketchUp is actually working with different terrains like this one. So um, for like, for example, if you needed to come in here and you needed to add like an outlet structure or drainage or something like that to uh, this sandbox, basically you'd have to do a whole lot of like rework and extra work in order to get things kind of in the way that they need to be. Well, this method can be really helpful for that. And so basically the way that this works is we're going to need two extensions. We're going to need soap skin and bubble which I'll link to in the notes below and uh, for this method I'm gonna use profile builder so profile builder I've talked about on the channel before but it's basically a smart profile creation extension with a lot of different functions so one of the functions is a smart path selection tool and if you're interested in more information about profile builder um, you can uh, download the free trial at the sketchup essentials.com slash profile builder I will note that that is an affiliate link so let's say, for example, that you needed to come in here and you needed to add like an outlet structure or something like that, um, basically within this uh, smaller section or this smaller area right here. Well, what you could do is you could come in here and you could just kind of model it and then just kind of like push pull it through the ground and then come back in here and try to like manually intersect things with that box and all of that. You could definitely do that, but that would get a little bit painful and time consuming. Well, with this method, what you can do instead is you can just cut out the terrain you don't need and then we'll fill it back in with soap skin and bubble. And so what we're gonna do is a lot of the time I like to go to kind of a top down view to make sure I'm selecting only what I wanna select. And let's say for example, that in this area we wanted to drop our outlet structure maybe like right here so what I would do is I'm just gonna delete out this uh, basically this whole area and so you'll see what that does is that creates a hole in your sandbox well that gives me an area where I can come in here and I can model what I need to model but the problem with that has always been getting it filled back in after the fact but let's go ahead and let's just uh, model kind of a basic outlet structure it's not gonna be anything special All right, so that's actually pretty terrible, but it'll work for what we're trying to do right now. And so what we wanna do is I want this to basically, what I need to do is I need to heal the skin around this object. And so in the past, what we might've done is we might've come in here and maybe just kinda of like drawn a few lines in here and tried to get a face to show up and it wouldn't really work very well because you wouldn't have coplanar edges. You'd have to do each one of these kind of manually and uh, that gets super painful. Well, what we can do in this case instead is we're actually gonna use the extension Soap Skin and Bubble to fill this in. And before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and erase out some of these jagged edges around the outside so that it's a little bit easier. Just note that in a, a real function like this, um, this might get a little bit more complicated, but for what we're doing right now, this should work just fine. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm just drawing lines off of the corners where I'm going to want my, uh, my face to go in. Actually, that works fine. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to select all of these edges, and we're going to use Soap Skin. And so what you could do is you could come in here and single click on each one of these and select them all, and that would work okay, but that would take uh, that would be even more time consuming. Well, what you can do instead is you can use a tool in Profile Builder called the Smart Path Selection Tool. And basically what that does is that allows you, it basically creates a smart path. So it tries to figure out what path you're gonna click on in order to allow you to select things a lot easier. Well, in this case, you can see how that allowed me to select this uh, circular, or, or this loop 
really easy. Well, what I can do now is I can use the extension Soap Skin to kind of fill in a skin. And the reason that'll work is because Soap Skin will create a skin across basically any closed frame. So you can see how when I hit the Enter key, what that did is that actually allowed me to create a skin across this back side. And I mean, obviously you'd have to be a little bit more specific on what your grades would actually look like. In this case, you'd probably draw a line across the back here. But for what we're doing right here, this should be fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do that down below. And so my assumption here, and this may get a little bit weird, but my assumption here is that we're just going to kind of follow along the outside of this outlet structure. You can see how I can just mouse over these and I can just single click in order to kind of lock in my selection. When I do that, that makes this really easy. And so now I'm going to hit the enter key and I'm going to use soap skin and bubble again. And notice that you can adjust the subdivision in here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to subdivide this so that it's about the same size as the grids that we have out here. So. You can just do that by entering a value and hitting the enter key. You can see how I can create a skin right here. And right there. And the one thing I'm having to do is I'm having to come in here and select these faces and reverse all the faces so the proper side is facing outward. But you can see how now you have this outlet structure in here and you've also got all of these skins built in around it. Then once you do that, you could come back with, uh, if I was to turn my tray on, you could come back and you could use something like the uh, soften edges tool in order to soften a lot of these edges to make this really smooth. So you can see how just kind of uh, building this skin back in is really easy using this method. And even if you wanted to further, because these all get created as groups, you could actually explode all of these. So you could right click and you could do an explode to kind of merge these in. And then if you do a soften edges, you could soften even more of those edges really easily. And then you could come in here if you wanted to you could use the erase tool to hide any edges that are left over. And then you could apply a material to this, like a grass or something like that. And you can see how this is in here without having any gaps in your skin. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you've thought about this workflow. And again, I can't take credit for it, but I wanted to share it because it's a great workflow. Remember to go subscribe to Daniel's channel as well. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.